Basically, stress affects every part of our body because what happens is stress is about the tiger. Here comes the tiger. So that's one thing. And, and so when I think about building resilience, it's kind of like, how do I put the tiger in the cage? So in ancient times, here comes the tiger, we've got to run. So our body shuts down everything internal. Our pupils dilate, the blood supply goes to our large muscle groups, arms so we can fight, legs so we can run or fight. And, um, you know, so our digestion is like, whatever, throw up and run. You know, think about that. When you get real stressed, what do you do? You throw up. There's not your their, digestion is not on the table. Sex, not on the table. We are not making babies. We're taking care of ourselves. And so it can be a tiger. It can be a famine. Um, but so everything is about survival. And so the body tenses up, it's tight, and it's all about survival. So stress is about how do we get the tiger in the cage? So one thing when we think about famine, it's, it's eating three meals a day. So the body knows it's gonna be fit. It's not holding on to fat just in case. It's like, oh, oh, okay, we're gonna eat again. We're not in the famine. And so, you know, dieting is like putting us in the famine. So eating three times a day, sleeping at night, what happened when people had to be on guard and watch? You stayed up all night to make sure the tiger didn't get in the village. Um, you know, and so everything shuts down. So if we want our vagus nerve to come back online, which is the main nerve that innervates our internal organs that keeps our digestion going. It's why we use visceral massage and visceral work because all of that, like our patients get to the Leah's, the Claire's, the Dominic's of the world and everything is so tight. And so that's why cranial sacral therapy, visceral work, whether it's our meditation, our yoga, breathing, you know, the breath shuts down. I'm hiding from the tiger so I don't breathe. Breath becomes very shallow. Everything, sh you know, you just think about scrunching down, hiding out. You know, we're either in fight, flight, or freeze. And so we don't always think about freeze. My little grandson, my baby, Ander, when he gets scared, he gets real quiet, he stares and he puts his finger in his nose. And, and like, even like, and, and he does it like this and he kind of slumps down and he does like this. And I don't care who talks to him, he will not talk to you. He's like the play impossible. He's just like, and, and you can't break it. You can't break it. I can pick him up, take him away from, and he'll say, scaredy scaredy mommy he'll tell his mommy he's scaredy but he won't tell wally he's scaredy but that's what we do those are those innate responses and we are powerless over the response it is going to happen and so until we build new neural pathways in our brain and our brain has a choice am i going into fight flight or freeze what also happens when we go there is our frontal lobe turns off we're in our amygdala, our primitive protective brain, our frontal lobe, our thir critical thinking part of our brain, it shuts down <clears throat> and it is in reaction mode. It's in primitive mode. So how do we give our brain a choice? We do breath work, but it takes practice every day. The same way we build muscle to run away, we build muscle through meditation, through heart math, um, through, you know, dynamic neural retraining, you know, all of those, that list of things that I put in there, but it takes practice. You can't just say, oh, I see a tiger. I think I'm going to do a little meditation right now if you've never done it before. And that's why a lot of people will hate meditation because their brain's just moving. It's just moving. And we live in that space every day. That is our culture is stress. So, you know, really then how do we repair? How do we rebuild? And how do we find spaces 
where, but you know, that's what I'm thinking about when I think about not even, you know, stress is that constant space we live in. And so, so, and it's so amazing when I start telling that story to people and people are like, oh my God, yes. And how do we feel it in our body? We feel it as anxiety. We feel it as fear. Of course we do. And then, you know, all, so it's like anxiety, that great diagnosis, let's give you an antidepressant. Well, that may help the brain, support the brain some, but I think that's the grace of integrative and functional medicine. We've got to have the right nutrients. We've got to have the right sleep. We've got to have practices that help strengthen those muscles, if you will, those neural pathways in the brain. You know, we've got to have those nutrients, maybe supplements, maybe nutrition. How do we evaluate that? We evaluate through three-day food diary. We evaluate that through um, through lab work, you know, looking at the gut. You know, all of those are ways to evaluate where the areas of opportunity are. And so as you come into functional medicine, it's not about finding out what's wrong. It's about, it's just talking with the, 20 minute consult yesterday. But when I said to her, cause she's for 10 years, 31 year old for 10 years, been trying to find somebody to listen to her, got Hashimoto's antibodies in the 900s, ridiculous. Endocrinologist said nothing we can do. Don't worry about it. Feels like crap for 10 years. And it's like, well, let's think about what opportunities you have here. And she stopped me and she said, I love that. And that's what our testing is looking for, not how do we fix you, not what's wrong with you, but it's what are our opportunities? And that's what we're coming for. You know, that I think is the difference. You're not wrong. You know, we live in this world where we are surrounded. Tigers are everywhere, perceived tigers, not real tigers. And so that, you know, maybe we get to figure out, is it real? But, you know, kind of like you described it perfectly, Michelle, when that world started and there's that suction, that suction, that it's almost like you just can't, you know, what are you going to do? But it's like, then where do you find your rest and your space in that? And so, you know, that is how I'm talking about building resilience, autonomic nervous system, stress. Stress is, it's, it's a given. We were powerless. It is coming. You know, and I tell people, unless we all move to an island or the mountains and hire Oprah chef and get our own personal yogi, um, you know, we're living in it.